at night. Oh my gosh, insane. Can't believe I have this in my car. My name is Jeremy and today I'm going to be doing a do-it-yourself painting my car which is a 2019 Kia Forte LXS painting the headliner black. This obviously isn't car specific, it could be applied to any car. If you want to take your kind of white or tan interior and upgrade it a little bit, my car, the majority of it was a black interior, but then this headliner as well as the trim pieces were tan and I figured it would give it a whole level up of a look if I did it a uniform black throughout the interior. I'm going to be doing uh, the spray paint with a dupla color vinyl and fabric. I looked at some other people's videos on YouTube and I saw that uh, they had great results with this product so I bought four cans for my application and I'll also link those videos. I learned how to do this from YouTube and now I'm kind of sharing my experience here so uh, without further ado let's get it. And then here is the headliner just one quick look at it. I did have uh, some dirty spots on it from taking it out of my car which I will explain a little bit later how I did that, what I had to do to take it out. One thing to mention, I kind of creased it here because of what I was taking out. That's sort of a rookie mistake of me kind of going into it, uh, zero to 100, but I kind of learned from my mistakes, so I'll share that so people don't make my mistake. Although I'm, uh, I'm hoping that the black transition will kind of hide that crease. I did have here uh, some dirty spots. It took a little brush to kind of brush a little too hard. You could see there was some uh, abrasion that went on here. So uh, just when you're cleaning this, also this area here, when you're cleaning any type of fabric surface, uh, make sure to be careful not to you know fully scrape the whole uh, fabric look away. Also a quick side note. Uh, for anyone who is wanting to do this, safety first. So I got the mask, uh, well ventilated area. Just make sure that you're taking everything safe. safety so even though I had uh, the garage opened up all the way it was rainy a slight downpour and there was absolutely no wind like you go outside you wouldn't feel anything so the fumes were kind of hovering around and I had to take cardboard I was uh, trying to clear out the fumes not trying to breathe it in the mask really wasn't doing me any good I had to be stepping in and out I would recommend that you wait on a nice sunny and not really windy day and you're outside and really not in a confined space because you don't want to be exposed to those fumes all right so as you can see here we have the finished product I think it looks uh, very uniform there's no lighter spots or darker spots throughout as you guys saw in the time-lapse I did kind of nice even 
strokes, sweeping strokes, and fork cans was plenty. Honestly, it really does look natural. It doesn't look inorganic whatsoever. It's it's a nice black. There's no, it's not like a, a, a different tone or anything like that. So I do highly recommend using this technique and also this spray can product. The fabric itself, it's, it's a little harder to the touch, um, but you can still feel kind of that foam aspect of it but it's not as uh, soft as it uh, as it was before uh, the spray can obviously because that paint kind of hardened on it you could see here that scratch I was talking or that crease I was talking about um, obviously since I pointed out it's easy to notice but with the black it does disguise it a little bit uh, you can still see here where I was rough with that coarse brush when I was cleaning, again, don't rub hard when you're doing this fabric because you will get this result. Overall, I'm really liking this headliner, how it turned out. It's, I think it's gonna look great in the car, really natural. Uh, next up will be the trim pieces. Yeah, I'll go ahead and I'm gonna incorporate a starlight headliner on this next. So. All right, so I'm gonna be doing a starlight headliner on a 2019 Kia Forte. LXS is my trim. So the story behind this and how I got the idea is I had a 2006 Kia Spectra that I totaled, unfortunately, and on the roof I had uh, glow-in-the-dark like sticky dots, but that was pretty ratchet. I wanted to do something a little more legit because this one is, you know, pretty new. I'm going to go through kind of what I'm going to use really quick. First of all, you got to have the music, the podcast going. I just have zip ties. I'm, I'm going to make this as clean as possible. So again, I went on YouTube before I even got the confidence to do this and I saw other people doing it and their, the fiber optics were all over the place. Uh, so this is some um, contact adhesive, Gorilla Glue. I'll link everything, what I'm using in the description. I got a two pack of that. I got these little pins. I'm gonna poke holes in this headliner. I'll go through it in a minute. I got this type of LED light machine. Uh, so I'll link this in the description. I got this exact model from another YouTube video actually. I'll also link that and then a little little uh, battery for my for this radio. I got the fiber optic cables. I already marked up where these stars or where the fiber optic strands are gonna be going. So I split it up in four quadrants and each of these quadrants have 75 little dots so those each 75 little dots on each uh, quadrant for a total of 300 stars now I got a four a set of 450 fiber optics because I wanted the nine foot length looking at some of the people on YouTube they put all 450 in and it just looks it, it looks it looks too uh, too cluttered you know so by the looks of this 300 is enough and really to make it as good of an effect as you want you know you don't you don't want to overdo it. These little pins here, that's about the size of the hole that I'm going to be making. It's just going to be a push through. These are the sizes of the fiber optic cables. Me being an engineer, I uh, counted 75 strands already and I uh, separated it. So that way it's, it's not crazy right off the bat. This is the extra 150 strands I'm going to tuck away. And then I'm going to have everything come on the driver's side rear corner. Now, so this is for any Kia Forte specific people. I chose the trunk because it was the easiest way to be able to hide this fiber optic cable was going through the C-pillar in the, the front rear uh, side into the trunk. I also found a hole where I could thread it through to be able to go to the trunk. My trim over there, it does not have a sunroof. So I only had a wire harness that was going over here and then one that kind of looped around. You could see where it, where it was. These were glued, actually, so that was terrible. I had to, I had to really rip that off um, and pry it open with a, with a screwdriver. After you get that, that's pretty much the only hurdles you need. A lot of people, they take off, for example, these things, whatever they may be, whatever the function, uh, they're glued on, and they're glued on really well. So um, I had a hard enough time with that wire harness that I'm not going to touch anything, and I think I spread it out enough to where it'll look uniform and I don't have to mess with those. Overall, I think it's going to look great, and uh, yeah, let's get started. <laughs>
finish gluing every single uh, fiber optic strand with that Gorilla Clear Grip contact adhesive. Uh, works really nice. It's been about 30 hours. These things are pretty solid. I trimmed all the strands. I left about maybe two, three inches on every single strand. Uh, this is just to make the headliner workable as I bring it back in the car. So I just taped everything down so it, it, it's out of the way of the foam as you can see here. I mapped it out on my car on how it's going to go in this particular corner then go through the trunk. This bulk of strand right here, that is the extra 150 fiber optic strands that I did not use. Uh, it does look kind of complicated from far back but I, I took it one strand at a time honestly and uh, it's, it's really not bad. If you take this approach, it's really manageable and you won't get overwhelmed if you do this. So this part of the video is uh, an update on the headliner for uh, 2019 and 2020 Kia Forte owners. As you can see, it's being held together right now. There's uh, three pins, three little push pins uh, that are holding it in in the back and then two in the front here. I did spray paint those black as well. The weather stripping is holding this headliner up. So without those, this headliner would be falling on my face right now. Here is the only connection for the dome light. It'll, it'll meet somewhere over here. This is the junction for where the wire harness goes up uh, through all the, and meets all of the other electrical connections. Here is the map. Uh, the map light console. Don't yank down the headliner right away because this wire harness is glued on. When I put it back, I didn't really glue or fasten anything down. I'm imagining they glued it because since the roof is bare metal, it gets very hot in the summer and they don't want that wire exposed to be touching that. There is a protective isolation on these uh, wires anyway, so hopefully they are protected. Uh, there's also a wire harness for this front collision warning wire it runs along here so that's also glued it everything runs here so you just need to pry it open the whole time it all kind of is hooked up in this corner and you just have to pry it out but once you get the wire harness free then this headliner is, is good to remove looking at it now there's really no permanent damage that I did when removing this headliner um, I actually removed it from the back seat so pro tip you want to take these the headrest of the seats off because it'll make things 100% easier. So I had the seats all the way front and then folded back like so. And I kind of went in, I removed it. I was bending the headliner kind of like this. But then as I put it back in, I kind of bent it that way and then and, and shaped it in so I didn't get any video of it I do apologize rest assured it is possible to remove and then put the headliner back in so here I'm going to explain the wiring portion of the starlight headliner the LED light engine I didn't mount but I more so just kind of placed within this little cargo net I had this cargo net actually works surprisingly well uh, the velcro really bonds well to the inner lining of the trunk here and I've driven with it a few times. It kind of absorbs all the bumps of the road as well. I did route these fiber optic cables up and through. There is a hole that leads from the trunk up to the driver's side C pillar. This is the power cable. So uh, I'm gonna link a separate power cable that I had to buy separate from this whole package because the package comes with an original six and a half foot power cable, but I had to purchase a 10 foot because that was the only way I could get it to the power source, which was that cigarette uh, power plug that I have in the front. I did route the power from over here and it's just going underneath uh, this carpeting on the trunk. And then where that little white kind of portion is by this uh, music sink thing here is, that's where the cable then goes. If you undo the seat, you can actually see it right there, yeah, along with that white music sync cable. But uh, it's going underneath the seat here. I made a little conduit strip, and then it's just going underneath. You can see it, so that black exposed wire, that's the LED light cable. It's then gonna go underneath this center console here, if you will, 
and it's gonna go through on the right side there. That 10 foot cable actually comes up to maybe about halfway here or so. Everything is underneath this uh, flap here. So then what I had to do was, uh, I had another electronic, actually it's the music sync thing that you saw in the back. Um, I needed to hook up that as well. So I had to buy a six foot extension a cigarette power adapter for this this red and black wire. This is the that extension cable So one part of the extension is this we just hook it up to that. That's the music sync the other end of the the splitter is going through here through this flap and it's powering the The LED light engine. So yeah, so that's the electrical part of the wiring you can see here is the fiber optic cables they run here based on a uh, previous portions of this video this was perfect because this was the only place I could route these fiber optic cables and then that hole where it, there's access to the trunk this was able to fit in there so I just kind of routed it through there how I found it was I just looked I was looking through the trunk I saw a little sliver of light and I'm like okay so I took a little thin uh, stick of aluminum and I just stuck it where that hole went and it turned out that that long stick of aluminum fed from the trunk I sh saw it exposed over here so I was like okay great there is a through hole I could use to route this and then I kind of tested it out it did fit so that was that was my plan a so that's how I approached hiding the fiber optic cable so I'm gonna put the C pillar over this and then we should be good to go all right so now we're gonna go ahead and paint all of the trim pieces of the interior black here you can see I have certain areas taped up of what I don't want to hit with the paint here we have other smaller components this is the dome light and I really taped it good I didn't want it, any paint to get in that those electronics this is the center console with the map lights. So tape all around there, those, those should be good to go. We have the C pillars here along with a B pillar. I only have one B pillar because the other one is in the car. The seat belt it makes it difficult to remove the whole thing completely so I have to do paint that one separately and then we have the A pillars. So the product I'm gonna be using is a Rust-Oleum product a flat black spray so this is the color we're gonna do flat black on the interior I went to paint and primer I didn't want to mess with any primer so I got kind of a two-in-one So we got everything painted. Uh, it turned out really well, to be honest with you. Overall, each component looks really good, really uniform. But now I'm gonna get ready to put it in the car. Yeah, so it ended up raining as I was painting all the trim pieces. I didn't get all the footage, but I got a, a good portion of me spray painting all of the trim pieces. Uh, a couple notes is every trim piece, I did three coats of the flat black spray. I waited about 15, 20 minutes for each layer to dry before I put on the next one and three coats on each side of the show surface so for example the sun visors I had to do three coats in the back and then flip it over three coats in the front so uh, just use your best judgment when you are determining kind of how you should approach painting in my case it was the sun visors but the roof handles had to uh, have three coats on both sides so disregard the obvious paint chip I will touch that up later 
Uh, but now time for the handlebars. There's two places where screws meet up and there's some locating pins, so I'm about to do that next. quick I'm gonna be showing you how to install the C pillar there's three clips you need to know about there was a clip right here one clip here and one little push pin clip there this portion right here it had a green clip that I actually broke what I actually did was I super glued this thing all around now it is like new kind of and I'm gonna snap it back in. Be very careful on these, this electrical wiring. You don't wanna screw up any of your uh, defogging system. So I'm gonna take out this weather stripping a little bit, feeding these two tabs in these slots. You'll see the slots. Once you have them pretty much aligned, push on this like in a downwards motion, okay? And then you should hear that snap and that's when everything is aligned. And now I'm gonna engage that green clip right here. And then I'm gonna snap in that one, snap in that one. And then when I went to remove it, this one was the hardest one though. This green one was the hardest clip to disengage. The green clip did not wanna come out and I wouldn't have been able to remove it unless I did break that green clip. Right, real quick, before we hit install the B pillar. Uh, we got to put the assembly together. Here's these two pieces that snap in together. They just fit in these little slots. Then you have to extend out this piece. Okay. Cool. Now there's this little spring that engages right over here. And this allows for adjustment of the seat belt. Now you can see it kind of acts as a button now. We're gonna take the actual pillar and then put this sub-assembly into here. So same concept with uh, snapping in. So there's a little guide ridge here and then a few tabs that you have to bend out right over here. Oh my gosh, there we go. I thought that would have been easier, but I guess not. That's that. Let's go ahead and install it. All right, so this is the B pillar. These two little guide tabs are gonna go in first. There's two little locating squares here. Once you have that kind of in all the way, there are two little, what used to be green clips that just snap in on the bottom. Before that, you gotta take apart uh, this bottom section. And I mean, it's only held together, it looks like by two little push pin clips. So, uh, if you just pry it out, no screws or anything here. So take out this weather stripping to start. All right, next I gotta feed this seat belt through. Before anything, make sure this seat belt is in the topmost spot because when you installed that spring originally, that spring is holding in the top spot. So that way everything all aligns. So now I push it up. Everything's lined up, bang, easy money. Just go ahead and push everything back in. That's that, now I gotta put this uh, lug nut back. All right, now I'm gonna install the A-pillar. There's two clips you gotta worry about on this A-pillar. There is a small little clip here, just one. And then there's this very odd clip right here. This one, snaps in right along top here. I had the hardest time getting this one off. You gotta get in there with like both tools. It's, it's a very fine space to work with in order to disengage these tabs. And what I'm talking about is these little arms that are sticking that are pinching out. So these arms will be the ones that you'll have uh, in your vision and you'll have, to, you'll have to compress those in order to get it off. You don't need to mess anything with this screw. Found that out the hard way. Guide it in. 
yeah, I just kind of pushed in and it, it, it dropped into place. Now I, this weird clip, I'm gonna engage it first here. All right, I got it in and I got my finger stuck. Ah! <laughs> Remove the weather strip. Step one. Step two, got it in. Step three, uh, put that weird clip in. Step four, just uh, snap in. I think I just kind of hit it in. Press that in too. And then put the weather strip back. So that's the hardest part, man, of, of the Kia Forte interior. Removing those panels. The rest is easy money, man. All right, next is gonna be the little sun visor hooks that are pushed in by this little push pin at the top and then a little screw goes on the bottom of that hole and they go in right there. So, driver and passenger side. So the sun visor, it's just a simple little hook that hooks up into a square and then you just locate the screw to install it. So here is the dome light. I came with these two little blue clips that were actually within these square holes here. I'm gonna place them in these notches and they stay pretty much put. Uh, they'll snap into place as I align the light and then they will hold the screws that will go on there. How the light kind of fits in is these longer tabs kind of guide in where I'm placing, touching my pinky with uh that's the part that like snaps in and then i'll go ahead and then i'll snap in the light or the light lens after that and for those of you wondering how this top center council map light assembly went on bigger locating tabs right here so don't pry it open from the top because they kind of slide in this way there are smaller engagement tabs in the back so what you're supposed to do is pry it open from the back and then kind of hoist it out that way uh, here you can see the microphone and the map light connections microphone map light and keep in mind those there's two more blue clips that go on these sides and then uh, they engage in here. So I'm in my car um, for the final review of the black headliner and then the blacked out trim pieces that I did. I put everything together, everything's all set. Yeah man, this is, this is looking nice. This is fresh, this is clean. Brings a whole new level of just to the car in general, the, the interior makes it look more pristine, more high end than it originally was. Overall, I'm really happy I did this. Uh, it is very worth it. I'm going to be really content while I'm driving this car for 10, 15 years. And everything looks super natural. Nothing's blotched up. One note is that when I was installing the trim pieces, for example, I had to take like a Q-tip and dipped it in the flat black paint. And then I, I had to touch up a few, sp uh, few spots that did have some ch paint chips. So most likely when you do this, there is going to be some imper imperfections, but you are going to be able to fix them. So to go along with the black headliner, when I did snip the final strands to make it flush with the roof, there was some, you know, little white fabric that I, you know, s 
made visible because I took the, like just my small scissors really close to it. What I also did was took a Q-tip with the, again, flat black paint, and I just kind of dabbed where uh, all of the strands were, where the scuffs were, and it took it out completely. It looks super natural. It didn't compromise the look whatsoever, and you're still gonna be able to see the stars. These stars are super bright, especially at night. For anyone who wants to do this, a project like this, I mean, go for it. It's, you know, if I could do it, you could do it. Uh, super easy, I had fun. Obviously, we are in quarantine. So I had time, you know, to do this and uh, the results speak for themselves. You know, I'm super, super happy I did it. And yeah, I'll be joining this from years to come. So, all right, with that, let's check out the stars. Thanks everyone for sticking with me through the video. You saw the car, you saw the lights. You really gotta be in person to really fully grasp what exactly is going on with this thing. Here's the remote. Uh, it has a bunch of different color options, light options, make it jump in and out, make it fade different colors. So overall, this thing is crazy. I'm super happy I put it in my car. Who else has this, right? So um, I hope you know the people who watch this video can do it for themselves. I really tried to lay out the whole process so if you find value um, I'm actually gonna be you know slowly building my brand putting my content up different than car content but just uh, rest assured you will get awesome videos so yeah definitely follow follow me everywhere I guess yeah no I hope you like it I hope you enjoy and until next time